So I have reviewed the Xiaomi 12. Make sure you catch my video of that one. It's in the channel, the full in-depth review. But now it is time for the larger model, Xiaomi's 12 Pro. So this has a 6.73 inch screen, which is an LTPO 12 bit, 1 billion color AMOLED screen. That's 120 Hertz. It's an impressive display. There's a bit of a curve to it. We've got a 50 megapixel camera as our main one on the rear, which is the Sony IMX 707. 50 megapixel two times optical camera, which is a bit of an odd choice because most people would just use two times digital zoom, which is normally actually pretty good nowadays, and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. It has a really great build to it with Gorilla Glass Victus and an in-screen fingerprint reader, all powered of course by the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, a four nanometer chip. And this model here that I've got has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. Is it a good phone or does it suffer from the same issues that I encountered with the smaller Xiaomi 12 model? Let's find out in this in-depth review. And inside the box, you will find here a SIM tray tool and a clear case that of course fits it perfectly. And it's got all the cutouts that it needs and they've even reduced the thickness of the plastic where the antenna lines are not to affect the signal strength there, which probably third-party cases wouldn't even bother about doing that. There's a few other things in here, a little bit of paperwork and whatnot, but that is all in Chinese. And then the cable that we get, typical Xiaomi, high quality, Type-C to Type-A cable, and our charger. This one is not a bad size, 120 watts, so it takes approximately 20 minutes to fully charge the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Yes, it is that fast. Now, build quality of these Xiaomi phones, their new flagship, I do like. It's a little bit more subdued compared to some of their earlier designs. I mean, the Mi 11 still is one of my favorites, but I do think that these look great. They look quite classy, the phones. So blue finish with the Xiaomi 12 here and the matte black one, I really like this finish. So it doesn't show or pick up any fingerprints really. It seems quite good in that regard, and we have the curvature to the screen on the ends of it, so in-hand feels a little bit better. Now this black, when you hold it up to the sun, at certain angles you can see in the light a bit of a sparkle coming through, which is just underneath the surface of that glass. I think it does look really good. Then our camera layout here on the back, I do like the fact that we've just got the three camera modules here now and not having like five or four or useless cameras that you wouldn't really use. So they do have the main camera, 50 megapixel. It is that new IMX 707. We've got a 50 megapixel ultra wide and then a 50 megapixel two times optical, which is a bit odd. I guess they're saving the five times or the 10 times optical for the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. That is probably where we'll see it. Xiaomi branding here on the back. It's quite subdued as well. You don't really see it. It doesn't stand out a lot. And then the outside frame, this is all metal. You can see some antenna lines here, but really nice, high quality finish and build with these new flagships. Down the bottom, we've got our Type-C port. Unfortunately, still no video out. Come on, Xiaomi, it's USB 2.0 spec. So not only does it not have video out, it's also, well, pretty damn slow. Should be a lot faster. Microphone, one of two Harman Kardon tuned speakers and then our SIM tray, which takes two nano SIMs, okay? No micro SD card support, but hey, we knew that they just don't do it with flagships, but we get it on their budget and mid ranges, which is good, at least. Up the top, IR transmitter, secondary mic, and that second Harman Kardon speaker. Now these buttons that are on the right side, good location. I can get my thumb quite easily to the power on button, volume up and down. They have not done a pixel, if you've seen the Pixel or you know the Pixel, they decided to be clever, Google, and reverse it around compared to everyone else. But we didn't have that, at least with Xiaomi, which is great. And they're made out of metal. They do feel really good, those buttons. And then moving over to our display, this is a LTPO AMOLED display, 1 billion colors, 12-bit, 120 hertz, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and up to 1500 nits maximum brightness. Wow. So it's a display that offers a hell of a lot. Now, one thing that I have seen that's happening with this display is a bit of banding. If you jump in here to the display settings, you'll notice that, oh, 
hang on, where is the DC dimming option? They've got it, but it's hidden away in developer options, unfortunately. So you sometimes might see on camera a bit of banding, especially depending on what you're recording with, you'll see a ton of it. Now in sunlight, you can make it out quite easily. Even though here, yes, it's it's got this banding going through it like crazy. Trust me, in person, you don't actually see that. You're not going to see that at all, but stands out, looks great, and you can read everything in the sunlight. Now we've got the color scheme options here, which I do love to see from Xiaomi. Plenty of different options there too that we can tweak and adjust this display to your own preference. And finally, they've given us this. I am very happy to see 90 hertz. So I can put it on to 90 hertz, and that's the best of the fluidity of the UI and battery saving. As I get onto that later on in this review, I'll tell you what the battery life at 120 hertz is like, and it's not amazing as you'd expect. It does take a toll on the battery. So excellent top tier display in this. Do you see a huge step up from say the Mi 11 Ultra's display or the Mi 11 display to this one? Not really, those differences in the color reproduction, the LTPO versus what we had before, you're not really going to see it in such a small scale here. Now, if we're talking about a 65 inch TV, then that might be different, but still don't get me wrong, great to have an excellent screen with a lot of tech in it. Now you might see at times that it looks like it's going to stutter. Well, that's because sometimes it does actually do that. Now gestures I've really had no problems with. It's getting better. We've had now two big firmware updates and I've had a bit of a problem with some apps like, for example, like Play Store. Uh, it's saying it's not fully compatible now, 64-bit architecture. Okay, that's interesting. I never saw that before. The recent patch has just done that now. And this has been very janky. The loading on this and the scrolling is just absolutely, look at that, look at that. That's just terrible. And after two patches, Xiaomi has still not fixed this. And it's because it's the Chinese ROM. So the Chinese team, obviously they're not focusing on Google Apps because that and Gmail are terrible. And another one that's pretty poor too is even Twitter that I've been running on this. Uh, I do find that it sometimes it has quite a bit of stutter lag and you know, it's not perfect yet. Now, a couple of times I have seen this system have a bit of animation lag too as well that I'm not too happy about. So clearly to me, MIUI 13 has quite a few bugs and a lot of work still needed. And onto our loudspeakers now. So you would think the larger phone would have the better tuned Harman Kardon speakers, right? Wrong. It's actually the smaller Xiaomi 12 sounds to my ears louder and marginally better than the 12 Pro. Here's a sample at both of them at 100% volume. So this was the last patch that came through, which they do claim is a MIUI 13 stable version, but yeah, it's far from stable. Still feels like a bit of a beta. Now, battery life, you're looking at 120 hertz with this fixed battery life test that I always do in my reviews. This is PC Mark, set the brightness to 200 nits, let it run. Okay, eight hours, just over eight hours. In real world use, you're looking about six seven hours maybe of on-screen time at 120 hertz. Now, if you cut that refresh rate down to 60, you get then about 10 hours, nine hours, and becomes quite a bit better. So if you're someone that prefers battery life over that real fast and smooth 120 hertz, definitely do that. Otherwise, I keep it always on 120 hertz. After all, that is what you're paying for. But 90 hertz with this model is a great sweet spot that the Xiaomi 12 does not have. It's only 60 or 120 hertz. So great, we have that in-between option. Now GPS, typical Qualcomm that has been now for years, that uh, it works well, good average signal strength, and the accuracy will not be any better than three meters. That's just how it is with them. It's a restriction that they have. And Geekbench, five score, so not bad at all. This is quite a good single core score there. That's coming from that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And this is the internal storage speed. So I've got 128 gigabytes UFS 3.1 here, 
and blazing fast speeds, really good. Now, these are not the highest I have seen, but look at those random reads and writes. They are super good, over 300 megabytes per second. So that's not going to bottleneck anything at all. Now, the wildlife score here, Xiaomi 12 Pro gets uh, close to almost 10,000 and an average frames per second of 56.4. Super good. So a big step up with that GPU with these smaller light workloads. But once it gets a bit heavy, yeah, things do happen, which we'll get onto later on. You get, well, throttling. And here, look at the GPU score here too that we get with Antutu. So almost a million point score. The big jump, of course, is this CPU. No, sorry, GPU. The CPU, I'm just thinking, hasn't really changed that much from the Snapdragon 888. It's not really that much faster at all. But that could get a very similar score there. So it's the GPU, we gain the performance, but later it gets hot and it throttles down and becomes pretty much Snapdragon 870 level anyway. So there's no LTE Band 20 with this model. Big mistake buying this if you do live in Europe and you need that. The global version will have it, okay? But this is an import version that I got, so that's why there's no LTE Band 20 with the modem. But I got onto 5G, and 5G does at least work for me. Charge time from 11% to 100, blazing fast. Only 21 minutes. Now, if you get this model, it's about 35, 40 minutes to charge it at 67 watts, but 120 watts super fast. They've also got that new chip in there that helps balance things out, make sure it's not overheating when charging, and optimizes the charge rates for it. So that's really quick. And onto our gaming performance. So this is where we do run into a bit of a major problem, actually. So a game like Genshin Impact, or just running very stressful other games or demanding GPU benchmarks, will rear its ugly head this phone, its big problem. So the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 will overheat. And this phone will kick you out of a game and display an overheating message after about, really depends, after sometimes 15 to 20 minutes, that will happen, overheats, kicks you out of a game, and I just simply find that completely unacceptable. Qualcomm's chip is far too hot, it's just like the Snapdragon 810 days, and I really don't think Xiaomi put in enough copper in this to keep it cool enough. Perhaps they wanted to keep the phone nice and slim and... In order to do so, they had to, well, skimp on a bit of copper, skimp on a bit of cooling in there. And as a result, you want to play those demanding games? You can, but there's a time limit to it before it starts to cook itself. And moving over to our cameras now. So with the Xiaomi 12 Pro here, it's the same 32 megapixel front facing camera as the Xiaomi 12, the smaller flagship from them. So we do have a maximum of only 1080p at 30 frames per second right now, but you can also use 60. I'm just using 30 because my timeline that I shoot is in 30. So unfortunately, I thought we would actually be getting 4K with these front cameras, being the fact that they're 32 megapixels now, a different sensor, but no, no 4K, 30 or 60 with the front-facing cameras. Now, a lot of other flagships, most of them nowadays will have that, so Xiaomi is definitely lagging behind. The quality, I have noticed that these front-facing cameras in bright sunlight tend to overexpose a little bit. It can happen quite a bit to some of those changes. Like right now, look how it's blowing out the background completely and look at my face here. It's being overexposed. So they definitely do need, I feel, to tweak and optimize these cameras, both front and rear. I'll swap over to the rear cameras now and just give you a sample of what you can expect from the Xiaomi 12 Pro. You can see the optical and electronic image stabilization as I walk ahead is doing an excellent job. Very smooth looking footage. This is 60 frames per second, so as I pan around, we should not see any judder. It tends to happen more when you're shooting in 30 frames per second. Now, the bitrate is still the same as 30 frames per second, and I've got to say it, they've gone backwards with the audio quality, because they are now using just the 96 kilobits per second yet again, and this is after a big firmware update, so I'm really disappointed about that. Now, if I tap here, I can zoom, not back, but I can go forward here, and you can go to two times. That's digital, but it's still using the main sensor. It's not actually swapping over to that two times digital sensor. So apart from the audio bit rate being now 96 instead of 320 kilobits per second, the footage 4K here does look pretty good. This is now the two times optical camera. So we can get in a bit closer and maintain those details without digital zoom. And walking ahead, you can see the electronic image stabilization doing a pretty good job to remove the shakes and the tremors as I walk along. 
And then the ultra wide camera, this one I find does tend to have a few more stutters when you pan around. So with the Xiaomi 12 Pro, you can shoot 4K 60 frames per second with the ultra wide. With the Xiaomi 12, it's limited that 13 megapixel sensor to just 30 frames per second 4K. So this is using a 50 megapixel camera. So end of story, what have we got on our hands here? We have a very unpolished phone, both of them, even the Xiaomi 12. This one overheats in about nine minutes with stress tests on the GPU. This takes about 19 minutes, thankfully. But I think Xiaomi's reached that point where they're just pumping out so much hardware. Clearly to me, the software team cannot keep up. We've got Android 12 now. We're on a new chipset from Qualcomm. Admittedly, a bit of a disappointment in the chipsets thermals so far, for me at least, but I think the team is flooded. If they're gonna have 20 Xiaomi 12 models, how are they going to keep up? Are they keeping up? I don't think they are. To me, clearly, MIUI 13 is like a beta so far. Xiaomi's got time on their hands. They can improve things, certainly. And when the global model comes out, I really hope they do turn things around. I'm a huge Xiaomi fan. My channel's been reviewing their phones since the Mi 2S. The Mi 2S, it's a long time now. And I can see with this phone, I think Xiaomi's starting to get a little bit complacent, if I dare say it. They could have done more with it. They really could have done more. They've decided that they're gonna take the path of Samsung and Apple maybe and go, you know, just an incremental little update. It really does feel like this is not that much better in its current state, that is, than the Mi 11. I personally, right now in this moment, I would stick with my Mi 11 or Mi 11 Ultra I would wait and see what's going to happen. And because Xiaomi's probably going to release about five different flagship mo models of this one, you know, the 12T series, the 12 Ultra, the 12X, the 12 Lite, wait and see what happens there. And I really hope that they can just optimize this and improve it. I'm sure they are. I'm sure the team's really working hard on it, but the cameras just aren't there. Those bugs I've seen, I'm not feeling it this time around. When the Mi, 11 was out, when the Xiaomi 11 came out, it certainly was to me a much more impressive device than what I'm feeling here with the 12 Pro. So thank you so much for watching my detailed, super opinionated review here of the Xiaomi 12 Pro as a big Xiaomi fan that I am.